hey guys hello everyone and welcome to the channel so in this video i'm going to talk about a very important concept from your inorganic chemistry and while i was taking my plus class i found out that this is one of the thing which is missing from the channel okay so i thought that i should complete this topic as well because this is also important and very small topic it comes under under the topic where you have to assign certain shape of the molecule generally uh, has to be taught uh, along with your VACPR theory okay so in this video I'm going to explain you that what this bent rule is and how you can use this bent rule uh, to solve questions related to CSIR net and I'll be taking few examples also in this video so at the end of this video you will take you will get a few solutions of previous year CSIR net also so we'll start with this so first of all i'll just tell you some very basic things what does these things and i'll be just talking about a geometry called trigonal bipyramidal okay so i'll be just talking about this trigonal bipyramidal now you all know that the hybridization for trigonal bipyramidal is sp3d right so sp3d is the uh, hybridization of it and let's say we have certain um, like we have some uh, shape for we have some geometry for which we have a metal uh, or we have a central central atom and we have uh, like let's say we have uh, like uh, four things attached to it okay so let's say i'm just writing it as ma4 so a is the other atom which is attached to it and uh, this m which which is your central atom that has a lone pair so in vscpr theory we have been taught that we we have three kind of uh, repulsion one is your lone pair lone pair repulsion okay other one is your lone pair bond pair repulsion and the next one is your okay just a second okay so the next one is your bond pair bond pair repulsion okay so these are your three repulsion so we all know that the intensity of lone pair lone pair repulsion is highest then comes your lone pair bond pair repulsion and then comes your bond pair bond pair repulsion so these are your three repulsions uh, which are generally seen in your molecule and you have to assign so that your repulsion your the shape in which the repulsion is least that is considered to be the most stable shape or the geometry so let's say we are drawing this that is ma4 so we have metal over here and we have four ligands a okay so a are the four different atoms so they can have four geometries either like they can be present three of them can be present on the equatorial bonds one on the axial and this lone pair can be present on the axial position or what you can have is so the second thing which is possible over here is that uh, like you have the same metal and you can have your lone pair on the equatorial position and your all four atoms arranged like this okay so this is your second thing which is possible okay so like this also you can have your shape so which one is more stable to understand this what you have to see is the ang angle okay so you have to see where is your uh, repulsion where your repulsion is more so in the first one if you'll see so we, we are just looking upon the lone pair bond pair repulsion because that is of higher intensity than bond pair bond pair because in this molecule you will not see lone pair lone pair repulsion we just have one lone pair okay so you have to see the next uh, strongest uh, repulsion so that is lone pair bond pair repulsion so now if you'll see over here you have okay so these equatorial bonds these equatorial bonds and axial bonds are like 90 degree to each other so this is the top view of this molecule if you will see it from the side uh, from the horizontal plane you will see that this this line is like all the uh, orbitals are like these are your equatorial lines okay so this is your equatorial bonds and all your axial bond will look like this so this this line which is showing you is for the axial one so over here your lone pair is actually like this okay so this is the side view of it so the angle between lone uh, this uh, lone pair and these equatorial bonds is actually 90 degrees so how many equatorial bonds are there so we have three equatorial bonds so you will be having three uh, lone pair and bond pair repulsion right so you will be having three lone pair bond pair repulsion whereas over here you will see that uh, your lone pair is on equatorial bond okay so your lone pair is, will be like this on the equatorial bond and your bond will be like this and this is your axial bond with the atoms a atoms over here so now you, the angle between axial and equatorial is actually 90 degree so you will be just having two 90 degree bonds one with this um, with this a which is on the axial position top side and the other a which is on the axial position down side okay so you will be having only two uh, lone pair bond pair repulsion so two lone pair bond pair repulsion so what does this mean 
This says that uh, in a trigonal bipyramidal geometry, if you have a lone pair for in the molecule, then that lone pair will be on the equatorial position. If it is on the equatorial position, in that case, it will have lesser repulsion. It will have lesser lone pair bond pair repulsion. You can take any of the geometry, and uh, like for the trigonal bipyramidal only. Okay, I'm just talking about the trigonal bipyramidal. So you can see that what kind of repulsion you can uh, you have over there. So in most of the cases you will see that if your lone pair is on your equatorial position in that case the repulsion is least and that is the most stable so among these two this one is more stable one okay so this one is the uh, correct structure or correct uh, shape of it now this was when all the or uh, ligands are same or all the uh, surrounding atoms are same now if surrounding atoms are different then your bent rule comes into play and for that before going to, going into that i will just explain few things or more about your uh, trigonal bipyramidal uh, geometry okay so your tri trigonal bipyramidal has uh, sp3d hybridization sp3d means you have s orbital you have three p orbital so they are px py and pz you have three p orbitals and you have one d orbital and basically which d orbital is involved over here is dz orbital okay so these are the orbitals which are involved in your s in your uh, trigonal bipyramidal geometry among these five these two are responsible for axial bonds axial bonds and these three are actually responsible for your equatorial bonds equatorial bonds okay so that means that uh, okay so if i ask that where your s character is more okay where the s character is more s character means the s orbital involvement of your s character s orbital so s orbital is involved in the equatorial bond so here you have more s character right and uh, where in the axial bonds you have less or no s character okay so less s character i'm just writing less s character so these things you should know that in the axial bond you have less s character as well as in the equatorial bond you have more s character now let's talk about the bent rule it says bent rule the statement for the bent rule says that more electro negative more electronegative substituent uh, tries to attain the position position or hybrid orbitals okay tries to attain that part of hybrid orbital which has lesser s character okay so this thing you should keep in mind this is very important that more electronegative substituent will attain that position uh, where s character is less okay now let's talk about the shape now we will use this bent rule this is the bent rule we will use this thing to assign shape of certain molecule let's say we have pf uh, 2cl3 let's say we have this shape uh, this molecule so if you will um, find out the hybridization it will be sp3d and shape will be trigonal bipyramidal now it can have two possible uh, shapes one is this that is you can have this phosphorus over here you can have all the three chlorines on the equatorial positions okay and your two fluorines one on the axial and other on this axial okay so both these fluorines on axial position and all the chlorines on equatorial position so this is one of the possible shape so, so the other uh, possible shape of the molecule will be uh, when your uh, these fluorines they will be on the equatorial position so the other one can be like this okay so i'll just draw that so it will be like this okay so you can have this shape as well this is your phosphorus and you can have two fluorines on the equatorial bonds one chlorine here and two chlorine left out chlorine or at the Equator, uh, sorry axial bonds so these are the cases okay but now here your bent rule uh, tells you that which one is more stable shape or more stable uh, configuration over here okay so it says that the more electronegative substituent tries to attain the position which has lesser s character and just now we understood that your axial bond has less s character that means your more electronegative group will go to the axial position so where your okay so among fluorine and chlorine which is more electronegative fluorine right so fluorine will attain your axial position that is the stable that will give you a stable shape and this is not the stable state uh, stable state okay so what 
is the consequence what we can draw from here is that more electro negative more electro negative uh, substituent substituent will stay on axial uh, bonds okay or axial position so this is one of the consequence one more example i can take over here is uh, this that is sf2cl2 now over here you have a lone pair also so now you can combine both of the things which we have just understood so you have a sulfur you have uh, fluorine so just draw sulfur over here we have just seen that uh, your lone pair should be on the equatorial bond so i am just drawing your lone pair over here now where will the fluorine go at the axial uh, bonds okay so fluorine will go on the axial bonds so this is your fluorine and your chlorine will uh, take your equatorial bonds so this is a stable shape of this molecule okay so this was all about your uh, bent rule and now what we are going to do is we are going to take a question from uh, previous year csnet and we'll try to see that how we can use whatever we have studied till now to solve questions related to that right so let's take upon the question all right so we'll talk about this particular question which was asked in csir uh, december 2017 exam okay and this question was asked for four marks okay so this was asked for actually four marks and it says that according to bent rule the p uh, for p block element the correct combination of geometry around the central atom and the position of more electronegative substituent is so it's very direct question okay anyone who has studied uh, bent rule he would have done this question very easily so what does uh, what does that says that uh, correct geometry around the central atom and the position of more electronegative substituent is so first of all this bent rule works well for because in a square pyramidal your uh, like for a square pyramidal you have uh, this sp3 d where both are involved so uh, we don't know that uh, your okay so over there okay so over there your s or d z is square these five orbitals these two are responsible for your uh, axial bonds okay but over here you uh, like the things are not that much clear as it is clear for trigonal bipyramidal okay so in trigonal bipyramidal what will happen over there it's very clear that your pz and dz square orbitals are involved for your uh, equatorial bonds so this bent rule works well over there okay so now you have to tell that what is the position what is the position of your electronegative substituent so i already told you that for trigonal bipyramidal is your correct option you don't you can easily score four marks okay now if we consider this for square pyramidal geometry over here you can see that more s character is uh, on your uh, basal bonds right so these are actually involved in your basal bonds and these are involved for your axial bonds in a square planar your more electronegative substituent should go on axial bond but it is not that much clear the bent rule works not works that well with your square pyramidal shape it works more well with the uh, trigonal bipyramidal because over here in the basal uh, sorry in your uh, um, this uh, if if you can see in your uh, square pyramidal your s character actually becomes very less in the basal bond it's around 25% and if you see over there in trigonal bipyramidal you are having like uh, s orbital px orbital and py orbital in the equatorial bonds right so over here your s character was more around 33% bent rule works more well with trigonal bipyramidal because in the equatorial bonds over here equatorial bonds you have more s character as compared to the s character on the basal bond so these are certain reasons which can justify your answer so yeah that's all for this particular video i hope it was clear to you i hope you guys understood that bent rule how it works and it works more well in your uh, trigonal bipyramidal so wherever you will see any trigonal bipyramidal you see difference in electro negativity of the substituent which are attached to the central metal atom always remember that bent rule will be applied over there right so that's all for this particular video guys if you like this video please like this video okay give it a like share this with your friends and if you are new to this channel please subscribe it okay so that's all for the for this video guys thank you so much for watching have a great day bye bye